Welcome back to Dr. Suchita's interactive class. The readings given in these online practical demonstrations are not ideal one. These are given under the conditions of COVID-19 situation. They may change in actual practical performation due to the chemical error, personal error, temperature uh, and other conditions too. Today, we will see one of the online practical demonstration to determine the dissociation constant of acetic acid by having a combination of acidic buffer where I will be taking weak acid and its salt of strong base that is CH3COH as a weak acid and a salt of strong base that is CH3COONA. We will see how it is possible for us to determine the pH by utilizing pH meter. Weak acid dissociates to form CH3COO- and H+. It dissociates weakly, uh, slowly. The strong salt of this particular weak acid is sodium acetate. It is an salt of weak acid strong base. So, combination of weak acid and its salt of strong base form a buffer solution. Buffer solution is the one which raises small change in pH. This combination whatever we are utilizing it comes under the heading of acidic buffer. Basic buffer is the one where weak base and its salt of strong acid where I can form a basic buffer. Now the buffer solution which will depend upon the concentration of salt and acid which is present in a mixture. If I combine weak acid and sodium acetate the concentration or the pH value will directly depend upon the concentration of salt and acid. So, if I apply Henderson's equation in this case, I can find out the pH of these solutions whose mixtures I am going to combine where I can find out pH equal to pKa plus log of salt upon acid. Now, if I plot a graph of pH versus log of salt of upon acid, I can easily determine pKa. We will see how it is possible. Now, when I am taking salt and acid in a mixture, pH equal to pKa, this is possible when concentration of salt and acid becomes equal. That means, this particular last term, in this particular term, if concentration of salt and acid, they become equal, pH equal to pKa and I can easily find out the value of Ka. So, when log of salt upon acid equal to 0, that is the intrinsic value of pH on axis where I can find out the pKa. In this particular experiment, we are going to utilize an apparatus that is pH meter, which where I can use a electrode, glass electrode, which might be combined with the calomel or it is a combined electrode. I need a buret stirrer. This pH meter, whatever I have, uh, digital pH meter I have shown over here where this is the power switch, this is the temperature adjustment knob as pH is dependent upon temperature. So, I have to adjust the room temperature to by utilizing this particular knob, calibration knob where I need to calibrate or standardize by pH meter, then I will use this calibration knob. This is your pH sensor or termed as glass electrode utilized to measure the pH of solution. This glass sensor is made up of reference electrode and working electrode. Reference electrode inbuilt in this pH meter glass electrode is silver silver chloride. Simply a silver wire is dipped in a silver chloride solution that is metal dipped in its salt solution form a half cell. This half cell has been combined with the glass electrode. The glass which we are utilizing over here is made up of sodium oxide, calcium oxide and silicate. Now, this particular combination of glass electrode measures the pH with a range 0 to 12. Now, pH is nothing but what? It is representing the concentration of H plus ion and the pH scale is de which depends upon the dissociation of water where I will get the pH scale as 0 to 14. Now, if I am interested in measuring the pH above 12, I need to do the combination over here that I need to add a lithium so that this particular same electrode I can able to utilized to measure the pH above 12 to. Now, this glass which is highly sensitive to measure the pH, how it measures? It exchanges the H plus ion which are there in contact with this glass electrode in a solution. So, the exchange of ions with 
inner glass membrane and outer solution that takes place to measure the pH of solution. This reference electrode silver dipped in silver chloride, this reference electrode has its own potential which is constant. Reference electrodes are termed as whose potential is known or constant. For this particular reference electrode the potential is constant as 0 0.240 and which has been combined with your glass electrode. So we can represent the electrical representation of the glass electrode with reference electrode test solution and again the glass electrode as exchange of ions takes place. Yes. Now how to use this pH meter? Let when I am utilizing this glass electrode I need to take care that it has been always dipped in a water because the glass membrane is highly sensitive and hygroscopic. If I keep in air as it is dehydration of this particular membrane or glass electrode is observed. So first adjust the room temperature, dip your electrode in a glass, glass electrode in a distal water, join the pH meter and put the power on. Now you can measure the pH of this distal water which, which has been shown over here as 6.438. Now I need to calibrate the pH meter. I need to calibrate the pH meter. Calibration or standard operating procedures to calibrate the pH meter where I need to utilize a solution whose pH is known to me. There are different ways to calibrate the pH meter. Either I can use the buffer solutions or I will use the solutions who, whose pH is known to me. So which is that solution whose pH is known to me? Yes, 0 0.05 molar potassium hydrogen phthalate whose pH is known to me as pH 4. So I can utilize that solution to standardize my pH meter. So take 0 0.05 molar pH buffer solution in a beaker and dip your glass electrode in it. Now adjust this calibrate knob and check your pH which is showing as near to 4. So that is the calibration of pH meter. Now I can calibrate this pH meter at pH 4, pH 7 and pH 9 too. When I am calibrating at pH 9, I need to take care the asymmetric potential developed during this measurement where I will utilize that knob while pH 7 automatically obtained by utilizing the buffer solution. Now in this uh, today's experiment, after standardizing my pH meter, I need to prepare different buffer solutions where I need to have 9 different 50 ml capacity of volumetric flask. So I need to take 9 different volumetric flasks, I label them 1 to 9 and I need to pick up these different volumes of acetic acid and sodium acetate into that volumetric flask. So once I will get these different solutions. I will fill the solutions in the burette which is labeled as 0.2 normal acetic acid and 0.2 normal sodium acetate. So these prescribed volumes I will pick up and I will prepare 1 to 9 different solutions of buffer with these combinations uh, up to 50 ml. Once I will prepare these all 9 solutions, I will need to measure for each solution I need to find out the pH. Now take your pH meter, wash your electrode with distilled water, put your buffer solution number 1, dip the electrode and find out the pH value. Report this pH value in your observation table. Again wash your electrode with distilled water before you are uh, picking up another buffer solution, dip your buffer solution number 2, measure the pH, again wash the electrode and find out the pH. While measuring the pH of all these 9 solutions, you have to take care that you are never ever going to stir the solution with the electrode. Utilize the magnetic stirrer if needed. Yes. For solution 4, 
write down all these readings in your observation table every time you are taking care of your electrode before dipping in another solution you are washing with it with distilled water yes solution number 8 and solution number 9 again wash it or keep it in the distilled water aside and do your calculation with respect to observation table what you need to have in observation table you are labeling 1 to 9 as buffer number solutions you are putting their vo volumes and you are going to find out concentration of acid in that mixture and concentration of salt where the ratio of this concentration and log values will be utilized to plot a graph of measured pH versus log of concentration of salt upon acid. Now how to find out concentration of acid and salt? Now to find out concentration of acids you utilize simple equation N1 V1 equal to N2 V2. You know you have taken one solution as acid and you are forming a mixture. Now what is the concentration of acid you have picked up for first solution? Yes, normality is 0.2 and volume is 5 ml. What is the concentration of mixture? Acid concentration in a mixture that you need to find out that is N2 and volume is 50 ml. So find out the value of N2. So this is your concentration of acid in a mixture. Similarly find out for salt. How will you put? Yes, salt and mixture. You know the value of salt that is the normality of salt and volume of salt. You know the final volume let it be find out the N2 as concentration of salt in a mixture. So these two values these are there for your solution number 1 or buffer solution number 1. This is the concentration of acid this is the concentration of salt. Put all these values in your table observation table. So complete this table. Once you complete this table, you go for plotting a graph of pH versus log of salt upon acid. So you will put here all the values of log of salt upon acid. Some values are positive you will get and some values are negative. So you have to take care that you are going to plot a graph with positive and negative values on this axis of log concentration of salt upon acid put all the pH values with pH scale and when the straight line intersect at pH scale this intercept value represent you what represent you the concentration of salt upon acid log value is 0 where pK equal to pH. So you know the pH value from this particular axis and then negative log of pKa you can find out the Ka value. Represent your results in tabular form with pK value of weak acid and then Ka value of acid. This is a small assignment given to you which will be very useful to give online practical viva where you need to clear your basic concepts. So find out the answers of these particular questions which I have given you as a student work. Thank you. Please subscribe, like and share this video. Thank you.